Welcome back. A quick one today. We're going to experiment with upgrading the software on the Tauntech uh, Logic IC tester. Um, mostly because I'm just curious how this upgrade process works. I, I don't think there's any significant changes that I'm particularly hanging out for. I just want to have a go at, uh, at doing it. So um, let's hook in and see how it goes. Okay, so a sensible first step in the upgrade process is to make sure that the unit actually works as it is before we upgrade it. Because there'd be nothing worse than doing the upgrade, finding it doesn't work, and not knowing whether it was broken originally or whether it was our upgrade that broke it. So just plug the serial port in. Okay, so we'll apply some power. Put our logic IC that we're going to test in. Hit enter a couple of times, and there we go. We've got uh, software version 0.58 from August 28th, 2021. And the chip I just put in is a 74HC244, and we can test it. And it thinks the chip looks okay. So at least we know now that the tester works before we start fiddling with it. So the next thing to do is gonna to be to download the new firmware. So I've gone to the Tauntech website. We'll scroll down, because the new firmware is at the bottom. And there it is. So we'll just click on that to download it. And I will open that and extract that to, this will probably complain because I've actually already done this. This is, yeah, I want me to overwrite, uh, yes to all. So looking at the folder, we just extract the files into, we've got a hex file for the master, a hex file for the slave, and, and this is a screenshot of the configuration bits that need to be set in the new PIC microcontroller when we program it. So we'll just uh, keep that aside because we will need to check that. So just looking at the readme file, right? So we're looking at code version 0.59 from the 27th of December last year. A um, couple of fixes, a couple of new tests, some voltage tweaks and a note that we might need to set the configuration settings going onto the microcontroller manually. Um, apparently it's included in the hex file, but some programmers require it entered separately. Um, most notably here though, the code for the slave microcontroller, because there's two microcontrollers on this board, the code for the slave wasn't changed, so we don't need to reprogram that one. It's only the master over here that we're uh, going to have to reprogram. So, I get my um, Mini Pro, um, what is this, Mini Pro 2, TL8662 Plus um, programmer, programmer, tester, does all the things. So we'll plug that in. And fire up the software. Right, now. Yeah. We need to select the IC, and I've already got it selected here. It's the uh, microchip MP in the microchip MPU category. It's the PIC 18LF 2420 in the DIP28 package. So we'll select that. We'll load our CT master 0.59.hex file. It's Intel hex format. Um, I think we can leave everything as defaults here. Okay, and there's our code. Now down the bottom here, we can see the configuration that it's planning on using. So if we compare that with what we need here, actually this is, this is interesting because if you go into the config tab, this is really unintuitive. Like address 300001, it says, well, it says we need the oscillator at the HS, which presumably is high speed, but we don't know which combination of tick boxes actually that is. We need FC MEN to disabled, but it's ticked here. And we need IESO, the internal external switchover mode disabled again, but it's ticked. But then it says bits that are checked are programmed to zero. So a little bit confusing, but what we can do is check off the values listed here 
with these values here. So uh, this will be three zero 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 zero, and then the next one is two one e one e, and then we'll note here that there is no four. That explains that gap. Eight five eight zero. And again, there's no seven, so there's, there's a gap there, which is this zero. Zero F, C zero, zero F, E zero, zero F, four zero. So I'm pretty confident that our configuration information is going to be okay. So at this point, we can put our new microcontroller in the programmer. And it goes in, it'll tell me in a minute where it goes. Um, if I click program, yeah, it goes right up the top. I thought it would. So put that in the programmer. And now we can tap program. Right, and in theory, we are done. So we can now take that out of the programmer. Oh, actually, we'll leave it there for just a second because we've got to lift, disconnect the power, lift the original chip out. Now, the reason I've done this with a new chip is so that if for some reason I buggered up the programming, I would have the original chip to fall back on and my tester would still be working. Um, you can reprogram these chips, but yeah, if you muck it up, you end up with a broken tester and the guy that designed these and sells them doesn't sell the chips individually like doesn't sell them pre-programmed individually so you know if you bricked your tester you could go out and buy another microcontroller and program it like we just did and put it in and recover your your um, tester that way or you could reprogram the one that you know if you if you bug it up the programming put it in it didn't work you could always reprogram it again um, to try and fix it. But it's nice just to have the original chip to fall back on if, uh, if things go sideways. So we take this chip out and put it in and that's in. Now we've got a little sticky here that I prepared earlier. It's not very sticky but we can put that on top. So the master 0 0.59. Now, obviously at this point, we don't know whether our new tester actually works. So we'll put our chip back in that we're going to test. This is the same chip we tested earlier. Apply power, no smoke, so that's a good sign. Back to our terminal program, hit enter. And there we go, chip tester 0 0.59, December 27, 2021. And that's exactly the version of code we expected. 74HC244 is the chip we've got in there. The one we tested just above. T for test. And so far so good. Um, it still tests chips. So we'll put our old chip in the anti-static foam here. And that, that chip can be reused. I can reprogram that with the next version of code if I need to, or I can use it for a different project. Um, they are entirely reprogrammable. So that's the, the process of upgrading the, uh, the chip tester. And if you have to update the slave chip, I mean, in this case, we didn't have to, but if, if you did have to do the slave chip, it's exactly the same process. You just load up in uh, the program, you load up the slave hex file, put the chip in the, in the program that you're gonna use for the slave and program it, and then just take this one out and replace it, just like we did for the master. It's, uh, it's that simple. Okay, so that's a, a quick run through of how to upgrade the, the firmware in the Tormentech Logic IC tester. Um, as you can see, it's not a terribly involved process, but uh, yeah, hopefully this video will help someone out there that's got one of these and might be maybe a little nervous about doing the software upgrade or not quite sure what's involved. Um, yeah, as you can see, it's a fairly straightforward process. So um, yeah, until next time, um, if you like the video, do those YouTubey things if, uh, if that's what floats your boat. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Cheers.